Today, we are going to have Tariyai uh, from the Bindura University uh, of Science and Technology in Zimbabwe, who is going to share with us on facilitating using law and technologies, the case that she's been working on. So uh, welcome, Tari, and uh, over to you. You can tell us more about you and your work, please. Over to you. Thank you. You are muted, Tari. You need to unmute. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, Thanks. There you are. Okay, so my name is Tarira Mkabeta. I work at Bindura University. Um, Bindura University is um, in a town called Bindura, which is about 87 kilometers from our capital city, Harare. Um, I've worked for Bindura University since 2010. My background is computer science. I did my first degree in computer science. Then in 2011, I joined the postgraduate diploma um, in ICT's education from University of Cape Town. And then I furthered to my master's and I graduated in 2016. So at Bindura University, I worked in the computer science department for about nine years. But after I finished my master's in ICTs in education, I applied to um, transfer to educational technology department, which is in the faculty of science education. So in that department, I teach educational technology, uh, learning management systems, ICTs in education. Um, that's what I do mostly. I love teaching with technology. I always try to encourage my students to try and test out different technologies. So that's mainly what my talk is going to be about, my experience. Um, so that's just a bit about myself. I'm a mother of three. Uh, after the COVID-19 pandemic, I started mostly working from home. So I've been trying to manage work and family and kids and their school as well. Um, that's just a bit about myself. I love traveling and uh, tasting new food. Um, I'm a tea lover. <laughs> so I always try to, to taste different teas. During the lockdown, I've, I've started making um, Indian lattes. Um, that's, that's what I do mostly. So off lockdown, I go out to just have lattes um, and uh, see new things. That's what I do. So that's just a bit about myself. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Tari, for your introduction. Uh, perhaps we can we can now start with the with with the presentation. Uh, so back to you again uh, to start on the presentation. Would you like okay. us to share the screen with you or you're going to share? You you have um, the you can actually share the screen if you want. You are you have the powers. Okay, let me try if to not, share I my screen. Share for and you. Then, okay, let me share my screen. Okay. And as you go on, if there's any any uh, anything in the in the chat, I'll alert you to that. So just just do the the presentation, then we can let you. Know. Okay, just checking if everyone can see my screen now. Yes, yes, I can. I think everybody can. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Up, yeah. Okay, so I chose. Um, to name my topic, facilitating using law and technologies, um, because starting 2019, we had a sudden lockdown in Zimbabwe. So I was working at Bindura University. I teach ICT applications in education, computer applications, uh, computer programming to pre and in service teachers. Um, who are enrolled at Bindura University. So my course is more of a, my courses that I teach are more of practical courses. So we used to have like uh, 
lab practicals, um, teaching students how to use the different technologies available to them. Um, but the with the outbreak of <clears throat> COVID-19 and it sort of impacted uh, how students who then ask, get access to education because uh, we suddenly had a lockdown. Students could not move. We could not go back to work to do the traditional face-to-face. -face. So um, it gave a challenge and an opportunity uh, to all the educational institutions to find a solution by determining suitable platforms and techniques for effective implementation of quality educational services, which uh, were not used before. So we, 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 from the World Health Organization, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention recommended uh, canceling of large conferences, limiting uh, mini, meeting sizes, um, our traditional model of person-to-person -person education, uh, lectures, uh, chalk and talks was compromised. So at Bindura University, we had been using technology, but it wasn't mandatory. You would have to meet students face-to-face. -face. Uh, you would have to teach students practicals. You would, you would have to do practical uh, lectures with them. And uh, whilst the learning management system was available and all te technologies and computer labs were working, it wasn't mandatory for students to complete um, their uh, assignments on the learning management system. It wasn't mandatory uh, for lectures to be supposed to, they were encouraged to have all the all, all their learning blended with technology as well, but it wasn't mandatory. So when the COVID-19 pandemic hit us in Zimbabwe, all, almost all institutions around Zimbabwe were trying to find uh, means and ways to have our students get access to, to, to education from wherever they were. Um, but when I started my master's degree in um, 2011, uh, when I worked with the uh, University of Cape Town, I was introduced to quite a number of technologies that we could use. Uh, and, you know, sometimes students don't always have access to these technologies, don't have access to devices. Um, but I, I, I did have a passion of using such technology. So I would, I would talk to my students, I would uh, ask them if they would try out different technologies and them being uh, 21st century learners who are mostly digital natives, they were keen to use uh, new technologies. They were, they were keen to try out. And I, I remember back then in 2012, some of my students actually coming back to me to say, ma'am, why can't we start this and do this on Facebook group ETC? So it quite, it inspired me. But um, at Bindura University, when uh, we, 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 we went on lockdown, I started to try and find ways to support um, my learners using technologies available to them. So at Binura University, our official learning platform is hosted on Moodle, and it has got uh, quite a number of tools, which include uh, the lesson tool where we could uh, create lessons and um, students are able to, 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 to do self-paced learning because they, they have access to the platform and can be able to go through a lesson we could start um, discussion forums. I used to create assignments for them and they would submit, um, give them deadlines. They used to complete quizzes. And then there was the new functionality. Um, it was new, it, it's not really new, but it was new at Bindra University to include the big blue button for, um, for our um, uh, web conferencing. And then we could also upload files for, for students to access. But then the challenge that I had with my students who were supposed to be using the Moodle learning management system is that um, at Bindura University, for a student to have access to our learning platform, they will need to 
have completed the registration process. And normally institutions, the uh, registration deadline uh, is like one and a half months after the start of the semester. So what it meant was that my students could not have access to Moodle learning management system for about one and a half months um, because the registration due date was like one and a half months into the semester. So it uh, was a challenge for my students to access the learning management system. The second thing was for those who were able to access the learning management system, it was being, um, it, it, it was available um, and hosted uh, locally uh, initially. But uh, students always used to, to complain uh, with the amount of data they need to access Moodle, how they are um, supposed to access it. And uh, sometimes it would um, make them miss uh, assignment deadlines, miss uh, discussions. But I got to, to learn from, from these students as, as they were giving me all their um, um, uh, excuses I could, I could call them excuses, but so, sometimes there were real concerns, but you would, you would find that almost always students who would uh, get in touch with you on WhatsApp to tell you that I have a problem with uploading my assignment. I have a problem, Moodle is down. I have a problem, I'm, I'm not able to, to, to meet this deadline. And all that communication used to happen on, mostly on WhatsApp. Then I started thinking about how I could uh, take advantage of the tools that are available to students. Um, generally, you'd notice that as institutions, we, we do have quite a number of tools um, that we have in place that are able to support uh, students that we are able to use uh, for education. But may, maybe the main challenge is those are not some of the tools that are available um, to students in in terms of having them access to um, to those tools. So I started thinking about how I could then use the platform that my my students have um, so that I support them during the COVID-19 pan pandemic. So my my I started um, a Zoom meetup. It was just a check-in, uh, but there was high, high data requirement according to the students. They would always complain that, ma'am, um, um, we, we need a lot of data for us to access Zoom. Then um, when they tried to connect with their mobile phones, some of the mobile phone specifications could not, could not, could not, could not run Zoom well. And um, I also tried creating a Google Classroom and doing a Google Meet with them. There was also that challenge of uh, data and access. But um, one thing that was a, a little bit different that I discovered from my students is they um, uh, commented out that they were ab more able to access Google Classroom than they were able to access Moodle, maybe first because of uh, registration and, and then uh, second because uh, Google is always is, is, is on the cloud and they are able to, um, to access it as compared to something that is hosted um, on the university uh, network. So I decided to start WhatsApp groups and on the WhatsApp groups I created for my learners, they responded better um, than the chat functionality that we, we have in Moodle. So what I, I then did is I, I created Google Forms uh, for quizzes and I shared these links on WhatsApp. Um, then for me to prepare for lessons or for me to prepare content that my students were supposed to, uh, to, to use or messages that I wanted to send to students. I used just Notepad and Word for creating my pretext. What I discovered is that when, when, you, when you want to do um, a live lesson on WhatsApp, it's better for you to prepare the text that you need to post in advance Unlike a situation where you, you, you have to start uh, typing and thinking out 
what to type during lecture. So I kept my, my notepad with um, pretexts of, um, of all, all, all the, the posts that I expected to post for my students. So I would then use WhatsApp text uh, during a synchronous lesson. I would also, um, or even asynchronous because I would send them um, instructions. I would also send them WhatsApp audios, um, share with them pictures, videos, uh, files like PDFs, links to um, videos and websites. And then what I also thought of was for my course, it was a practical course. They were supposed to learn um, Microsoft Word and how they create lesson plans on Microsoft Word. They were supposed to learn Microsoft Excel and how they can um, do the uh, uh, coursework calculations using Excel. Um, it was practical. So I, I then identified open uh, MOOCs that my students could do on their own. And what I just did was to share with them links and uh, to give them a timeline to say, I expect you to finish um, um, working on Microsoft Word. For example, on GCF Learn, it's a, it's a free platform where my learners could learn how to use Word, how to use Excel, Access, uh, Publisher, um, ETC. And uh, I also had some other platforms I, um, I gave them links to for them to learn things like learning management systems, uh, what is Moodle. I gave them links to YouTube videos and would do that on, um, on WhatsApp. And I would then request them to say, okay, if you can uh, get a, a data bundle it would uh, need you to have uh, this much data. Let's say if they get um, in Zimbabwe, we, we have uh, weekend uh, data bundles that are cheaper that you can buy for an hour or for two hours. So they would buy that and use uh, those data bundles to download uh, the PDFs that they need to read uh, to go through the video content uh, over the weekend. Then we would then set up time on WhatsApp, we would start discussing um, the learning material that I would have shared with them. So in terms of uh, using instructional design um, models uh, for Tari, me, yes. Tari, since there are two questions uh, based on the last uh, slide, probably so, I could, I, we could, um, I, I was just wondering, how did you make sure that your learners do not bring personal conversations or sell their wares into the WhatsApp class or discussion spaces in WhatsApp? And how, how did you, how did you, you know, just have that conversation? And then there's another one from Sechaba uh, that says, usually MOOCs are hosted on learning management systems, such as Open Coursera, Moodle, Sakai and others. How was the access issue versus the institutional model? Okay. And and then he has also additionally, did you have to get uh, buy in from the university management to take this route? So perhaps you can handle what is related to here and then the others you can, as, as you go on, perhaps you have planned it later. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe to answer the first question, yeah, it's fine. I can take the question now. To answer the first question, maybe I'll show you um, as we uh, proceed with the presentation. You you would notice that on my uh, on the WhatsApp group that I I created, we we had uh, the the initial conversations that we had were just introductions, getting to know each other. These are students I had never met. Um, because we in, we were in lockdown, so generally in a face to face uh, setup, you would you would get into your first lecture and get to know them, get them to introduce themselves. So maybe the very first thing that we we did after they created the the students are the ones who created the WhatsApp group and and added me. Um, I, we, we, we took our time to introduce ourselves. Then after that, we started. Um, agreeing on ground rules to, together. And uh, I ended up creating uh, for, for, for them a summary of ground rules that we had talked about. And we had agreed to say, this is what we're going to do. It's them, the students, who then suggest to say, okay, guys, let's have um, 
discussions about the course only. Uh, let's not have adverts in this group. Um, let's let's do this. Let's do that. And then I also used um, on, online material that I searched uh, on how to to effectively run a a WhatsApp. Uh, group and I found some rules I shared with them. What do you think about this? And then we like, we, we like sort of agreed. And then after we did that, we created our, um, our list of rules that would then post on the, on the platform um, occasionally for us to remind each other. And uh, I, I, I didn't really restrict them um, you, because I noticed that my, my students, because they had other courses that they were doing with other lecturers. They ended up maybe sometimes posting messages about those courses in our WhatsApp group. I never really restricted them to say, no, you don't, you don't have to talk about anything else because I noticed that they were quite free to be sharing um, information on our group. But I, I had specific times that I set where we did uh, synchronous sessions. And I think I'll show you one slide as we proceed. Then in terms of um, MOOCs being hosted on learning management systems uh, on Coursera and Moodle, and exactly that's what's on GCF uh, Learn. But um, I guess when I started presenting, I, I told you that our students have access to um, the institution's Moodle learning management system like one and a half months into the semester because they only get to register when they pay their fees. And, uh, but the semester would have started. So when I gave them those links to, um, to other learning management uh, system-based MOOCs, they were able to complete uh, uh, tasks and to, to, to do practicals even before they managed to register on the institution's learning management system. And in terms of getting university buy-in, what happened is when um, we went on lockdown, um, we initially using Moodle was not mandatory at our institution, but uh, policy changed after the pandemic to say, okay, let's have e-learning, let's have online learning, let's move everything to online for our students to have access. But the platform that the institution owns or that the institution has available for, for lecturers and students officially is Moodle. So um, when they realized uh, that challenge of students not being able to access Moodle, um, our administrators advised us to use alternative uh, methods of reaching out to students during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So which, which, which meant that it was easier uh, for me to communicate with my students and say, okay, yes, uh, this is what we can do and this is how we can do it. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Uh, I think that's, that's uh, the questions for now. So I, I think we can continue to the next one. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. That was awesome. Okay, great. So um, what I will, I will show you on the um, screenshots for, for, the, for, for the WhatsApp, which I'll share you with you uh, very soon, is how I then uh, tried to incorporate um, uh, an instructional design model uh, to, to, to try and uh, make it help me create uh, uh, content or create uh, uh, in a, a, a very good learning environment on WhatsApp with my students. So for example, uh, on Ghana's nine events, the first thing is to try and gain attention of students through stimuli um, and thought provoking questions. You, you'd find um, as we move on with the presentation that I try to, to have students introduce themselves tell us uh, their, their life goals. Um, and then uh, I, I, I then started by giving them objectives of uh, our lesson and to say, okay, this is when we are expecting to have our synchronous uh, lesson. But before we do that, I wanted them to go through learning material before. So 
I posted for them, I, I, I prepared and posted for them learning material that they were supposed to go through before the, uh, the date for the synchronous session. And they were, when they were busy completing those tasks, they were actually engaging with the learning material before the time for the synchronous uh, WhatsApp lesson. And then on the day when we, were, when we were supposed to then have our synchronous lesson, you would then post to them to say, who has, who has managed to complete uh, reading this handout, we has managed to watch this video, we has managed to do this uh, online lesson, and students would then come back to say, oh, ma'am, I've managed to do um, the GCF Learn Word um, um, course on GCF Learn, and this is my certificate. So you notice that that practical that I expected to, to be doing in the face-to-face -face, uh, lab um, timetable uh, uh, time before the COVID-19 pandemic, they were then able to, to use those platforms to do the same thing from, from home. And um, like, like I mentioned before, these students would uh, try and get cheaper, cheaper data in bulk and set uh, time that uh, set aside time um, for them to go through that learning material well before we did the face-to-face. -face. So I tried to follow um, all the steps coming up with um, examples, sending them pictures um, so that they, they get well prepared before, before the lesson. So I'll just quickly jump on um, and show you some of the, some of the things that we, we did. So the first thing that I would do is to do introductions. Uh, I asked students to share a pic, um, a picture of themselves to write an introduction on text or to send us audio. Um, and then we then went on to the discussion about ground rules. And then I shared the course outline with them. Then when, when I shared things with them, I would then say, if you have managed to read this message, if or if you have managed to go through the course outline, post done. Um, those are some of the messages I would send on the platform. And then when they go through the material, they would uh, respond to you. And then you would know that, oh, OK, they've managed to do this. Then um, I send them free lesson activities. And uh, I give them expected time to say, I expect you to have finished all these uh, pre-lesson activities by this time. Um, when, when you do your lesson planning, you have to, to, to try and uh, check generally how long they need for them to complete the pre-lesson activities. Then you give them a, a, a deadline to say, I expect you to have gone through this by this time. Then you continue to check because when you are using uh, social media or when you're using WhatsApp, you need to continuously uh, keep uh, conversations going. Uh, so you would ask them, how far are you? Do you have any questions? Is there anything uh, that's giving you a, a challenge? Then uh, just before the lesson, we share a lesson um, objectives, then we do the synchronous lesson. So the synchronous lesson now um, was uh, a specific time that we agree to say, we are going to meet from 10 to 11 uh, and discuss um, our topic. And that topic, they would have covered it already when they did their pre-lesson -pre activities. So you, I would then start asking them questions relating to the Three lesson activities that I would have shared with them, and then we start doing the uh, the discussions. Then I pose questions to them. Students reflect uh, on the questions that I I give them. So my my role then became a facilitator because all I I, I was just now doing was to ask them more questions, um, to ask them to respond to. For example, I I did an online uh, facilitation course uh, with Image and I think in 20, 2018. So when I did that course, it encouraged a lot uh, asking students to reflect or to, to, to post a question and also respond to other posts from other students. So that's what I would, uh, I would always do. Then I would, I would then uh, complement that with uh, doing a quiz with them at the, at the end of the lesson 
or a pre-lesson quiz just to check um, what they've managed to do and what knowledge they have got on a, on a specific topic. So I'll just jump on. Um, I, I, I did not uh, download the pictures uh, so that I try to keep the uh, anonymity, anonymity of students. So like, but for example, um, students were introducing themselves on the platform. So I posted a, my, my audio, introduced myself, and then told them it's now your turn, introduce yourself, tell, tell us what you're doing and what you uh, expect to achieve, what you're looking forward to be doing in this course. And students were posting these kinds um, of responses. And um, you, you, you notice that I said introduction and setting ground rules. Here, um, I was uh, telling them as we respond to this message, please share with us one ground rule that we can adopt to make our learning effective. So I think that answers the question that was asked previously. So one student was responding to say, no jokes are allowed on this uh, platform. And another student was seconding um, that post. And then uh, after we finished, um, having this discussion, I then created a list of ground rules where I said, oh, now please read these ground rules and uh, let us understand them and adhere to them. This will help us um, run an effective uh, course online on our WhatsApp group. So um, after doing all this, I, I, I then started introducing them to the different topics we were supposed to cover. Then I would give them uh, the pre-lesson activities. Like for example, I would say, watch the following video, download this handout, um, download these audios and listen to them by 12 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, and then I make an announcement to say, let us go through the pre-lesson activities above. We'll cover the first topic in tomorrow's chat. So make sure that you read the lesson objectives, listen to the audio, watch the video, read uh, the PDF. Um, and then we will have our live chat. And then I give, I give them time. These students I had were teachers, uh, were in-service teachers. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, when their semester had started, they all, all only had, uh, most of them only had lunchtime where they were able to, uh, to respond. So I gave them pre-lesson activities so, so that they go through them at the time that was best for them. <clears throat> and then we agreed on a specific time that we were then supposed to do a synchronous lesson. So, um, synchronous activities, and I, I, I hope the screen can, can be seen. Um, I would, for example, ask them um, to give an example of application software. In, in this case, they were, they were doing computer software. And when you are facilitating online you would, you, and you are doing synchronous, you would want to give them time uh, to respond, but you would want to also remind them to say, you expect them to respond. Uh, like in this case, I said, I expect you to respond in the next minute. Just give me uh, um, an application software that you picked from listening to this audio. Then from listening to that audio, um, what do you think input devices I can give us examples? Uh, and then I, I, I told them that I will give you one, one minute for you to respond. I noticed that that works very well when you're doing uh, asynchronous um, chat, because uh, if, you, if you just leave it open like that, sometimes students who will think, okay, there is a question, but they will not really know if uh, the response is needed then. It then. So I, I would continuously tell them that you have one minute to respond, um, then also to say, are you able to respond to another person's post? Um, and then to, to be giving them feedback live as they are posting their, their responses. Uh, and I saw that it, uh, it actually works. Um, so for, for this one, you, you would say, uh, I, I, I would say sometimes due to technical challenges, computer storage systems 
uh, fail, then I, I ask them, what should we do in order uh, for us to ensure that we recover uh, quickly when this happens? You have one minute to, uh, to respond. And students would, would then just uh, respond. They would have covered most of this uh, in the pre-lesson material that I would have shared with them. Um, so I, I, I found that it really does help them. Then at the end, um, I, I, I posted a message like, I appreciate the wide range of knowledge that you shared on um, in the speed at which you responded. Uh, it's appreciated. Now we are going to, 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 to do our test just to check what you know. It was a multiple choice that they were supposed to, to then inbox to, to me, I do the marking on WhatsApp and send it back to them. So I, I, I found that, so when I sent um, a message like this, at the end of the message, I would say, if you have finished reading this, post read. So it actually encouraged them to read fast and post read. Sometimes we would do sort of uh, games with them to say, okay, now we're going to do a quiz, but this quiz, we want to see who responds first. Um, so after you've finished uh, reading all the instructions, post read, then they would post that. When I have um, most responses, I'll know that they are now ready um, to start doing the quiz and then we, we start it. Then one thing that I've also um, um, observed is when you, when you are doing some of those quizzes that you expect them to be responding, uh, same time, you, you always need to encourage them to, to use reply to post uh, so that you have a, you, you can track back the conversation and how, how it's going. And I found that it, it works um, good. So at the end of the lesson, for example, I gave them specific reflection questions and I asked them to each respond on um, each question and then check responses from so like for example this is one student who are one one student who was responding um to to a to to a, a question down at the bottom this is one student who was responding and then on your far right you would you would find that um um some of those students will then go back to posts by other students and begin to comment on them. Um, then at the end of the test, I, I, I say it's time up. I, I like gave them enough time for them to fill in and told them to say, I expect you to have done filling in um, this and inboxing me your, your response by this time. After they are done, I then uh, post back on the platform that these are the answers I ex expected on the quiz. And then you would you would notice that the discussion continued. Uh, if anyone had a question, if anyone had something uh, to, to add, they, they actually started uh, con uh, continuing to discuss and then giving them reflection questions to, to, to talk about even post the synchronous lesson. I, I, because my, my students are in different places and are not able to access it at the very same time, I, what I ended up doing was to say, when we finish a synchronous lesson, I'll then post a message to say, uh, I will leave this platform open for your responses if you had not finished responding to everything. And then you, I, would not, I would always notice that conversations would, would continue to go. And uh, it, was, it was quite interesting have, uh, discovering that uh, students are, are able to engage with material and to post uh, uh, questions. So like I mentioned before, when I started uh, my presentation, I said uh, I tried to encourage them to just use technologies they have available to them and to test out new technologies. So during the weekends, we used to have our Zoom meetup that I called check-in. Uh, so during the weekend, we just checked in and started talking about the experiences uh, well, when they were going through the material during, during the week. And like I said, most of them were in-service teachers they started having requests, getting requests from, 
from, from headmasters at their schools to say, how can we use technology? Uh, like, how can we use WhatsApp? How can we use emails? How can we use Zoom? So I, I, I noticed from what we've been doing with students that they started giving me feedback to say, ma'am, um, we, we initially didn't want to do it on, on Zoom, but can we just do a meeting on Zoom because I need to learn it. It's needed where I'm working. These are the kind of uh, uh, feedback and responses I got from students. And uh, I, 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 I kind of um, ended up concluding to myself that uh, if you try to, to support students and just encourage them to say, uh, let's um, face our fears and try these things, they will eventually start trying them because it didn't come this easy. Initially, all students were complaining data, they were complaining everything. And, you know, I would just encourage them and post to them to say, to say you know what, in other places, people are actually sacrificing and um, able to, to, to learn these things despite the COVID-19 pandemic that we are on. And as these students started getting requests from their uh, workplaces, I noticed that uh, they, they started um, participating more. They started actually requesting for um, for, for us to, to test out and to try out these different technologies. So that's just about my, um, my experience and um, I'm done over to, to the host. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chari. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you so much. There is a question or uh, yeah, from Rowan is asking, how did you submit evidence of student attendance? Was this required by your institution? Um, student attendance, it, uh, what, what happened was you, you noticed that on my, on my WhatsApp group, what I did was to take all the ass assignments and assessments that they were supposed to be doing on Moodle and pushing them to a technology that they have access to. So um, in, in terms of attendance to, 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 the, to the WhatsApp uh, sessions, they were not required by the institution, but what was required was for them to meet the deadlines for submitting uh the uh, the assignments for assessment requirements and stuff so mm -hmm. students actually saw this um uh, using whatsapp is something that benefited them more so i ended up having most of the times i ended up having um 100 attendance because they saw it more as something that was to their advantage than having the, just the institution saying, we need this from you. So attendance wasn't a requirement on the online platform on the Moodle learning management system. All that was needed was for students to complete their, their assessments and to complete their assignments. Um, thank you, Tari. I hope Rowan, uh, that answers your question. Um, if, oh, thank you. If, if someone else has a question, please just raise your hand and I'll identify you and you can ask the question directly if you so wish. Uh, that would be really welcome if you'd like to just ask a direct question. Um, I, I, I was just wondering if um, in Zimbabwe you had any support from the, the, the service providers for data. Was there a pricing? Uh, during the, 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 this period, was there or up to now, was there pricing different or anything like that from the service providers to help your learners? Um, yeah, our service providers, they, um, uh, one, the major service provider that we have is Econet. Um, and what they did was they, they had a um, learning data bundle that was cheaper for students. But uh, that one, we did not have access to it as lecturers. What I just saw was conversations from students um, collecting uh, their details that they were to submit to, um, to, to the network service provider for them to get cheaper data. But um, what I noticed on my own group uh, is that my learners were using um, the data bundles that were 
just availed to everyone. There were not specific learning data bundles um, because during weekends, they were when when the COVID nineteen pandemic started. They, our network service provider started giving specials like over the weekends for people to be at, attending church services on uh, on Zoom. They were offering cheaper bundles during the weekends, and those are what I saw students communicating more about to say. We, if we get a weekend bundle, then we can do most of the work during the weekend. Then um, on our WhatsApp, uh, the monthly WhatsApp bundle that is not so expensive, that's what we would then use to do the um, uh, text messaging and stuff. And it was not a, a big data requirement, but the big data requirement, they, they would then go through, go through it over the weekend when data was cheaper. Then um, from the institution, there was uh, nothing uh, that uh, there was nothing for students and, and for staff as well. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I just had a passion to, to have these students learn. I, I, I just remember the time that I was a student that I really needed to learn, but I, I didn't know how if we didn't have the resources. So I was more of um, asking students to say, if you want to try this out, this is what you could do. And I got... Uh, buying for from students they they sacrifice their data i also sacrificed to purchase my own data and uh, do it for my students yeah that's that's how we did it thank you there's a lot of appreciation of your presentation uh tari please accept that thank you the shaba <laughs> is asking to back up the information from the particular class did you consider using the export option available in whatsapp or how did you do that uh, uh and exporting to google drive how 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 did you do the backup yeah that that's um that's one thing that i that i didn't do uh fortunately i still have the data because when i was uh, preparing for this presentation that's when i went through my thread and noticed that i i still had everything but what i did is uh like like i i told you before for my for all the uh text that i needed to post on on the group I have my uh, my pretext on on um, on Word that I keep in my folders, but in terms of this data that's coming from students, I think it's something new that I'm 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 getting that I will consider um, exporting it uh, all all my data to to Google Drive for me to be able to to use it later. Yeah. Uh, there's there's one of the things that happened during uh, especially the first times of the uh, of the pandemic where we all needed care and support how how did that affect your learners how did that affect you and the learners and everybody around you know uh, uh, your institution how did you cope with that uh, it was a diffi difficult time uh, but it, it, when the COVID uh, pandemic sudden lockdown started. I, I personally did need that support because I, uh, um, I was anxious. And uh, at first I didn't know what to, what to do because like here in Southern Africa, we have, we, 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 we have uh, power challenges. Uh, we have challenges to access um, different things. So what I did was when I started these WhatsApp groups, what I noticed from my students was this was one of the platforms that they would then just use to be sharing information about what they're going through. When we did our check-ins, our weekend check-ins, we would first check on each other, how are you doing, um, and assuring each other that we would go through this. Um, then we would then start talking about what we might need to do in terms of continuing with life. Whilst we, we do have uh, this pandemic, it's uh, something that we didn't expect, something that we don't like, and something that's affecting us, our families and everything. Sometimes you would work over time because if you're working from home, uh, well, some people think working from home makes work easier. But I, I, I also think as a mother, it's you 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 have you you have to work more and i i did need that key uh unfortunately um there's not so so much that um our institution 
really did to support people during that time, especially in terms of resources, because they're also constrained, um, according to my understanding. But in terms of just giving each other emotional support and stuff, we just used to uh, to use this WhatsApp and the Zoom check-ins check um, to talk about different things. And I think that helped. That helped us pull through. OK, um, we have Elena. Um, Elena, would you like to take the mic and just share? Because you say your personal experience is also proof that the fact that students participate better when using WhatsApp. Do you want to, to share with us uh, that experience? Mm -hmm. We still have some five minutes, if you don't mind taking the mic. And there's also a lot of appreciation that is going on uh, for you. And you might want to share your contacts. Someone was asking for contacts. Uh, they might want to have a discussion with you. So okay. yeah, so there's, there's a lot of that. So one of the other things that I just wondered was what are the, was there a time that your learners were felt overwhelmed by all these things that were going on, you know? um and and what were the reasons um that that they gave about just feeling like they didn't want to continue was it just technology or there were other things um it wasn't just technology um although maybe because i i was responsible for teaching them icts in education most of the um the the information i got from them was technology related Although some would then uh, talk about other issues, like some would have family issues, some would be taking care of um, uh, loved ones or family, um, and uh, they would then share with you some some of that information. So, as as their lecture, what what I would I would just do is maybe to uh, offer them an ear to offer them my time to respond to them. Some it would be in individual messages uh, being sent to you. I'm taking care of my mother. My mother has been hospitalized. Uh, this is happening to me. And um, I, I've just discovered that I tested positive to COVID. They would, they would send you all those, uh, besides the technology issues, students uh, kind of confide with you and start uh, telling you what their experience is. And you just come in and become the support. And some of these things that you that you were not even trained in terms of your school qualification, you have not, you are not, you are just an ICT um, person. You are just a computer science person. But uh, I, I, I would then have to, to, to get in, uh, read news, listen to some of these conversations and also share uh, with my students because because they know that you are their lecturer, they kind of com confide with you and they kind of expect um, you to, to, to know some of these life issues. And I, 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 I cannot say I'm expert in, um, in, in some of the issues that came to, to my ears, but I, try, I just tried to, to, to give them as, as much support um, is, is I knew and as I got. Like I mentioned when I gave you my introduction, uh, I'm a tea lover. So here in, in Zimbabwe during the COVID-19 pandemic, people were talking a lot about uh, using our traditional herbs and doing teas uh, with traditional herbs for just to, uh, to, to boost our immune system and stuff. So I would just be uh, talking to them about all this stuff and saying, oh, okay, uh, research is saying that uh, it's not like we call it Zumban. It's not Zumban which will heal you from COVID, but uh, it 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 has been proved to have uh, just this that can help you uh, during this time. And we are just encouraging each other. Maybe just that. And I see a question that says, "Did you?" Uh, yes, 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 yes. These are these are um, management support. Uh, from Gabriel, um, just wondering if you got some um, management support there. Um, I, I haven't seen the one from Gabriel. What does he say? Uh, um, is that, did you have support from management? Uh, 
um, our management just said, uh, encouraged us to make use of all these different technologies to support students, but they didn't uh, technically support us in terms of getting the devices, yeah, getting data and stuff. Um, that was not there, but you know, when, when I don't know, does it come with, uh, when you just have a passion to help people, you just go out of your way and uh, you start doing these things for your students. But we didn't specifically have uh, support for, from them. Uh, they, they had their resource constraints that they talked about. Yeah, and they, then there's a question, I think it's the one that you had seen um, about uh, keeping updating content in Moodle despite using WhatsApp, uh, because he has heard uh, some colleagues in higher education indicate that they still need to keep updating content in their respective learning management system for quality assurance purposes. So do yeah, you, you know, do that? Yeah. yeah, you know what, um, at our institution, like um, it's um, like it's now mandatory to have all courses online and all course material online. And so you, I would, I would have that, <clears throat> but um, I'll be honest with you and say, I would not get uh, students use those. That's why I decided to move everything to a platform where I could get responses on. And then say for, for the two assignments that you need to submit, please submit them on Moodle. But we, we, we sort of like took discussions to where students are found. That's what, that's what I did. But then in terms of, uh, it's, man, it's now mandatory at our institution that um, we have to have all the, material on um, on Moodle. Um, but being a lecturer, being the instructional designer, being you like you you don't have the teaching assistants to be helping you doing all all these things and it's quite taxing. It, it meant that I did not have much more time to continuously up, update Moodle, although I do have all the learning material and all the assignments uploaded, but continuously updating uh, it, I could not find that time because I was focusing more on um, communicating with students on the platform that that they are found. So, so maybe I'll think maybe in the in the future if there was a way of just creating your your content and then um, just like we do when we when we schedule, like for example, you you can schedule an assignment on Google Classroom, right? I, 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 I was hoping to get something that would pre-schedule for me and post on all platforms because you are the one, you are the lecturer, you are the one who is expected to become the instructional designer and to do and to wear all these hats. And sometimes in terms of time, it's not possible. Wow. Um, <laughs> and and uh, Ruth would like to know to what extent did your students abide to the ground rules? How do, and how did you manage this? Um, you remember the ground rules I was asking? <laughs> yeah. What I noticed was like students, they 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 I I try to involve them in creating rules themselves, right? Um in in one of the groups that I did not use for this case study, uh it, it this one was a bigger group, it had more than uh, more than 180 students, you know, uh and these are young students. So no matter how much you tell, you say, guys, let's go back to our rules. We we do have rules. They will they will just post. But you know, as a lecturer, you can't you you can't remove a student from a group. So what I ended up doing sometimes for for this specific group that I'm talking about, that had over 180 students, I I I I was forced to at times lock that group because messages would be fly. Sometimes you would do an online meetup. After you do an online meetup, students start discussing and posting things. Then I open for discuss for discussions, but uh, you would find that some students are complaining of data and they don't want these discussions on. So, yeah, it was we 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 would talk about these things, encourage each other. Sometimes I'll just leave them uh, to talk about what they wanted to talk about and say, guys, I'll tell you when I when I come back online. Um, I I can't. <laughs> I, I can't you messages I were just too much sometimes. So yeah, you would remind them, but um it doesn't always work, especially when you're when you're working with the 21st century students. <laughs> uh -huh. 
<laughs> That's interesting. So um, since we have come to the end of the hour, what, what encouragement do you give? Uh, I can see Lucian. Lucian is from Tanzania and I know he works with a lot of teachers. And quite a number of us, I, I can see Gabriel, who is also from uh, the Tibet sector in Zambia and Mohammed who works in Egypt and a few other people. What is it that you tell them about using law technologies? What, what is that one thing that you'd share with them? Okay, the one thing that I would share with them is um, when, when you think about using law and uh, technologies, um, our institutions can, can manage to give us access to, to almost all technologies that we want to use. But sometimes think about what students have access to. Um, and when, 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 when you think about what students have access to, you can support them better if you decide to use what they have. So for me, it was WhatsApp. Um, and you would know that students would respond, they would respond and they would participate on WhatsApp, but it was just not the same when you would try to do the same chat on Moodle, when you try to do the same discussion forum on Google Classroom. So you meet them where they are. That's my, that's my biggest <laughs> point. Okay. Oh, we need to appreciate you so, so much. Thank you for a wonderful session. We learned so much. I think we tried too much and little is more. So you are wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you for everybody who joined. I appreciate you, Lucien, for making sure that everybody got your, <laughs> got your link. And I can see many Luciens who joined. Uh, so it means that you shared your link. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, let's continue this conversation. You can join the, face, uh, the Image Africa Facebook uh, community so that you can you know, know what is coming up. And you can also join Image Africa community uh, by signing up, it's always free. And we always have this kind of conversations. If you follow the Facebook page, then you'll see what is upcoming. Um, so thank you everybody. Um, I can see a few people who have been in the facilitating online. So yes, I appreciate you. And Lucian, I appreciate you for being here. So thank you, Tari. I hope you'll have, you'll come back and tell us how you're doing towards the end of the year. You'll come back with a part two of this. If, okay. if you can, yes. We appreciate That's all right. I, I would. Oh, I just saw something from uh, Gabriel saying 180 is a lot. Yeah, I noticed it is. And maybe one thing that worked out for me very well was to then create breakaway rooms for, for them. So we have a main group for um, for, 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 for teaching, then I give them specific assignments and ask them to create smaller groups. And then they just add me for input or for observation. And those smaller groups that are happening on, on WhatsApp actually helped my students continue with this conversation and then come, come back to the main group for feedback. So we would have then group represented, uh, representatives coming back to, uh, to share what they would have discussed in groups. And I think that worked uh, quite well for the bigger groups. Fantastic. So shall we say goodbyes? And, and I know this conversation can go on for three hours. <laughs> if, if we continue, no, seriously, it's, it's, it's such a useful uh, discussion that we have and we need uh, because we, I, I think we overthink things and, and this is how to do things simply and achieve yeah. your goal. So thank you so much for sharing your, 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 your process and your struggles and everything and, and, and your achievements also. So we appreciate you for that. So join us again another time. Uh, we will have another session and we'll let you know in our, in our social media. So thank you everybody and have a great, great day. Um, and the rest of the week enjoy. Bye for now.